Welcome back. So, we've had a bit of a mind bashing with tensors for the last uh, lecture and a bit. What we're now going to do is to relax back to something that may be a little bit more familiar. We'll be looking at tensors again later, but we need to do a little bit more revision of the Newtonian world first of all. And we're going to start by revising two types of flow field that are very important for rheologists because they're used routinely to make rheological measurements. We're going to be looking at these two flow fields a number of times. We're going to look at them now for a Newtonian fluid, which will be familiar to you. We'll look at them later on for a shear thinning fluid, which will be a development and hopefully something new and interesting for you. But then what we're going to do is we're going to abstract it, because if you think about measuring a viscosity, what we want to be able to do is to do it for a completely unknown fluid without having to say, well, we think this is Newtonian or we think it might shear thin. However, if we haven't recalled properly how we define certain parameters for a Newtonian fluid, for a shear thinning fluid, then making that leap to an unknown viscosity is quite a big one to start with. So we're going to look at pipe flow. Please don't sigh. I know you've seen pipe flow a lot in the past as a chemical engineer, but we're going to do it through the eyes of a rheologist now because pipe flow corresponds to small bore capillaries and small bore capillaries are very, very useful in determining high shear rate measurements for unknown fluids. So we're going to look at the derivation for velocity field, for volumetric flow rate, how we relate that to pressure drop and then obtain a final expression that allows us to get a viscosity from those measurements. In doing so, we're going to highlight experimentally and practically what rheologists can control, what they can set, what they can measure. And we'll be revisiting these parameters, what can be set and what can be measured, when we talk about practical rheometry later on in this course. So, what we're going to do to start with is remind ourselves the force balance for pipe flow. So here on the whiteboard I've put a sketch of an elemental fluid element within a cylindrical coordinate system that is subject to pipe flow. So it's a shear based flow, the pipe is of a constant diameter, we're assuming the flow is fully developed, we're not looking at transients, startups, shutdowns in flow, we're not looking at diameter changes. Quite simply it's a unidirectional flow the flow is in the x direction along the length of the pipe. The pressure is also changing in the x direction. The pressure drops in the direction of the flow. And the x direction velocity varies with radius. So it's a parabolic velocity profile. Now, there's a few things we need to remind ourselves of. First of all, it's the force balance. If we think about that elemental cylindrical part of fluid that is there on the centre line, one end is going to be experiencing a higher pressure than the other end. And so we're going to say that on one end we've got a pressure of P plus dP by dx times dx, where dx is the length of that fluid element. And if we think about how that pressure acts on surface area, because we're doing a force balance, we can say that the radius of that cylindrical elemental block of fluid is just R. So P plus dp by dx dx, that's the pressure acting on that face, multiplied by pi r squared, which is now the force acting on that face, therefore is related to the forces acting elsewhere on that fluid element. If we think of the other forces, on the opposing face, the one that's actually shaded in blue, that smaller diameter ring shaded in blue, we've just got the pressure p, and we can see that will cancel out the pressure term p in the force balance on its opposing face. If we think about the periphery of this cylindrical element, it's subject to shear stress, tau. Yes, we know it should be face first, it should be on the radial face acting in the length direction, so technically it's tau rx, but let's just drop that for the time being as an overcomplication and say it's just tau, scalar. And we can see that the area upon which that acts is just pi r, that's perimeter, times dx to length. So that is my force balance for an elemental cylindrical block of fluid. And if we work the algebra through, if we cancel out p and pi and put the subject of the equation to be tau, the shear stress, we can see that quite simply that tau is r over 2 dp by dx. 
as engineers, we might say, well, dp by dx, pressure in a pipe flow once it's a developed flow varies linearly. So dp by dx is approximately the pressure drop divided by the length. So tau is r over 2 delta p over l, where delta p is the pressure drop across the pipe. OK, so sometimes what we want to do in rheology is say, well, tau here varies with radius little r. What I want to do is to set a datum, a, a place in the flow where I can always reference the stress back to. And what we do in capillary rheometry is to use the pipe wall as a datum. So tau subscript w is the shear stress at the wall, which is big R, the pipe radius, over 2 delta p over l. Now, let's think how we tie this in to the Newtonian constitutive equation. Here we are back in 1D, you're probably relieved to see, is that tau equals mu times gamma dot. Gamma dot is du by dr in this case, and we know that we can write that as little r over 2 delta p over l. We've already, de already just derived that for tau. So now we have mu du dr equals r over 2 delta p over l. Now, what we want to do to start with is to derive a velocity field. So how does my velocity u vary with r? OK, if we look at the first equation there, u and r both appear in that first derivative, it's du by dr. So we simply integrate this expression to get my velocity as a function of radius. So there we are, we're integrating between little r and big R. We might choose little r to be 0. And we're going from r over 2 delta p over l mu dr. So if we work the calculus through, we can see that u as a function of arbitrary position r is delta p over 4 l mu pipe radius, big R squared, minus the radius where we started the integration, little r squared. So there is how my velocity field can be defined. We can rearrange that and we can have that r, big R squared over little r squared minus 1. And we can see that it is indeed, as expected, parabolic. So now that we have established what the velocity field is, the next thing to do is to figure out what the volumetric flow is. Practically, it's very hard to measure a velocity field. You can do it using techniques such as laser Doppler velocimetry, but you're not going to find a laser Doppler velocimeter as your go-to piece of equipment in a standard rheology lab, unless you're very, very fortunate. However, we can measure, or more to the point, set volumetric flow rate very simply and very accurately. If you imagine a syringe plunger displacing at a certain velocity, that is setting a volumetric flow rate of fluid within the syringe. So my volumetric flow rate of fluid Q, if we think about it, we've got our velocity U of R for an elemental um, circle of fluid that is of width delta R. We have a radius 2 pi R delta R. And if we multiply it by the velocity U of R, that will give us the volumetric flow within that annular ring. So for the entire pipe, we simply integrate each of those contributions from annually of varying radii from the center line to the outer wall. So that's what we have written in this expression. Q equals 2 pi minus delta P over 4 L mu. That comes from the previous line before. Integral between the center line at R equals 0 to big R, the outside wall times r squared minus r squared. Now the text in white in that second equation just relates to where the area comes in for that annular ring. It's There's a pi, there's an r, and of course it's, there's a dr as well. So that's the, that's the elemental area. If we integrate this, what we find is that mu, my viscosity, is pi times pipe radius big r to the power 4, delta p over 8 l Q. Now, I've highlighted delta P in blue here for a reason, because this is the measurement that you can take very easily as a rheologist. So we set the volumetric flow rate Q, and we measure delta P. We know the geometry of the capillary. We know its radius, we know its length, and that allows us, if we know it's a Newtonian fluid, to measure that Newtonian fluid viscosity. Let's think about what my shear rate magnitude is. 
This is important later on because we need to sometimes refer back to a shear rate when we think about linking any variation in viscosity that is caused by shear rate. For example, if we have a shear thinning fluid. So my shear rate at a particular radius, gamma dot of r, is du by dr. And if we differentiate the expression for u that's right at the top of that blackboard there, we can see that, well, it's 4q over pi r4 times r times little r. So my shear rate varies with radius, which is a bit of a nuisance. Much as we did with shear stress, sometimes what we want to do is to get a datum to refer to shear rate against. And so our datum, again, is going to be what the shear rate at the wall of the pipe is doing. So gamma dot subscript w is the shear rate of the fluid at the wall of the pipe. That is when little r equals big R, and so simply we just get 4q over pi big R cubed. So we have tau at the wall, the shear stress at the wall, we have gamma dot at the wall, the shear rate at the wall, and when we're dealing with different capillaries of differing radii with fluids that shear thin in various ways, that is a very useful datum to refer back to. Okay, let's look at some key points. The reason we're looking at pipe flow is it relates very directly to capillary rheometry, which is something we're going to look at in lecture four. We need to remember how to derive the velocity field, u of r, and the volumetric flow rate, q, and that's what we've principally recapped in this lectureette. The reason we've written the final expression for viscosity the way we did is that rheologists set the volumetric flow rate, q, and measure delta p to get the viscosity, mu. We've seen that certain parameters, tau and gamma dot, shear stress, shear rate, vary with radius, which is rather annoying if we're wanting to say this experiment is done at x reciprocal seconds. What we need is a point in the flow to refer to when we say that. And the point we refer to is the tube or capillary wall, and we've derived expressions for the shear stress and the shear rate at that reference point.